Hi everybody, this is Sam from Sammy's Best Dead Stuff 888. Now, it's been a while, I know, but 2021 is going to be a good year. A good year! And I'm... Today we're going to be reacting to Food Theory. I was going to react to these sooner, but I keep forgetting to record. Anyways, I won't be reacting to the other ones since I've already seen them, but time so you can taste this video soon. Wow, taste technology? Wow, I love tasting things. I'm really loving eating things. Anyways, let's go. This guy makes good content, and I might be- I'll be putting my li his link in a pinned comment in the bottom of this video. Okay, let's go. Hello, McDonald's? Can I get a combo number one medium size for delivery? Actually, you know what? Can we make that a large? Thanks. Whoa, this is- Yeah, I love the info. Okay. Work. Yeah, great job on the internet. Hello, internet. Welcome to Food Theory. Never fear. While other channels are off theorizing about WandaVision, Food Theory is serving up what you really need. Theories about Wonka Vision. That's right, MatPat just referenced the 1964 novel Charlie and the Chocolate Factory here in Love 2021. It. Now, if you've ever read it or watched either motion picture based off the book, then you'll probably recall Wonka it. It Vision, was okay. Willy Wonka's fictitious invention capable of transmitting oh, yeah, chocolate bars, among other things, through the air in a million tiny little pieces. Taste it. It's delicious. It's just gotten smaller, that's all. It's perfect. It's unbelievable. It's a miracle. It's a TV dinner. It's WonkaVision. As a kid, WonkaVision was pretty much the most magical thing I'd ever seen. Right up there with magic eye paintings, but with the added bonus of not giving the eye strain. Seriously, if you let your eyes go out of focus, and then you cross them, and then you get really close to the painting, and then you move your face slowly away from the painting, you'll see dolphins. They're 3D. They're leaping out of the screen. I just feel nauseous. What a weird trend. Only 90s kids will understand. But seriously, Wonka Vision. Think about this. The idea of a physical candy bar being broadcast right into your home. Come on, that, that sounds incredible, right? Of course, the concept makes my head hurt a little bit now that I'm an adult. Law of conservation of mass might have a thing or two to say about a huge chocolate bar becoming a fraction of its original size. Really, there is no shortage of scientifically questionable things at play in this scene. And yet, this fantastical invention, this product of pure fiction, this seeming impossible possibility of science is closer than we all think. You heard that right, theorists. Hold on to your top hats and purple velvet because we're soon going to yeah, have access like to Wonka Vision. Food transmitted directly into our homes via the airwaves. The future is now, people. Or at least it's coming real soon, and I'm the one who's going to explain how it's going to get here. So last year, a team at Japan's Meiji University revealed a prototype device known as the Noromaki Synthesizer, a so-called taste display capable of artificial Officially creating any flavor you can think of. You simply tell the contraption what flavor it should produce, touch your tongue to the end, and that exact flavor hits your taste buds. Ooh, that's Tome nice. Miyashita, the creator of the Noromaki synthesizer, reportedly got his inspiration from RGB displays, video screens like the ones that you're watching now. He uh, noted intro, how easily video our eyes video, video section. On video screens are real, even though they're technically nothing more than a bunch of pixels composed of red, green, and blue lights. Oh man, please tell me that the fly thing worked on at least somebody watching this video right now. Did one of you try to swap the screen or at least roll your eyes that a fly had landed on your screen? Well, there you go. It was just a trick of a bunch of red, green, and blue pixels. And Miyashita realized that if those three simple building blocks, red, green, and blue light, were able to trick our That's eyes, then them. maybe our taste buds could be fooled the same way. After all, our current understanding is that there are really just five basic tastes. Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami, sometimes referred to as savory or meaty. And if presented to our taste buds in the correct proportion, these five building block tastes can blend to create any flavor out there in existence much like how three colors of light can create any image that we see on a video screen quick side yeah, note on that face. rgb screen by the way you might yeah, be wondering why the three colors of light used by an rgb screen aren't red yellow and blue after all in grade school we learned that those are the primary colors if you mix red yellow and blue paints together you can achieve any color under the sun well yes that is technically true for subtractive color mixing that's when you're dealing with paints and pigments 
pigments and substances that absorb light. But here, we're actually using light itself. We're projecting light. Whoa. And when you mix colors of light yes, together, I love those big colors. Additive color mixing apply, which is why yeah, we this, green. This guy can only make this source. The more you know. This is the so only guy that can make this kind of thing. the Noromaki synthesizer prototype, which got its name from its similarity to Noromaki sushi rolls. Inside the device are five gel filled tubes, each containing a different electrolyte solution responsible for one of the five basic tastes. The tube containing glycine oh, is man. responsible for sweet. The sodium chloride tube okay. is salty. Glutamic sodium is umami. Citric acid is sour. And magnesium chloride I wonder if is bitter. Why do they stuff. choose five electrolyte solutions? It's because they conduct electricity. And that is the key component of how the Noromaki synthesizer works. Basically, the Noromaki synthesizer completes yeah, an electric circuit between get your ready, tongue get and go. your hand. So they're going to show my way. Ion electrophoresis I can't to believe occur. it's In short, over reality. the electric field causes the positively charged electrolytes inside the gel-filled tubes to move further away from your tongue, so you can't taste them as much. And since there are five different circuits at play, this allows the Noromaki synthesizer to adjust the electric field in each individual gel tube as needed. As an example, let's say someone wanted to recreate the taste of, uh, I don't know, Diet Coke, just a hypothetical individual user of this device. To achieve that sweet, sweet, delicious nectar taste, the device might apply no electric current what- Hmm, this kind of reminds me of that episode of Ready to Go, as I mentioned earlier. So I haven't seen an episode where they were trying to make, recreate a a dish from our planet. There's a f scene where they touch the screen and they, they get the, a taste of flavor. And I wonder if this could be worth seeing. Who knew that in, that planet had uh, this tech? Who knew that technology was uh, inevitable? Invading other planets will be inevitable too whatsoever to the sweet tube, allowing the sweet tasting electrolytes to remain right up against the tongue. Meanwhile, electric current would be applied to the bitter and salty tubes to drive those electrolytes further away from the tongue. So in essence, the Noromaki synthesizer achieves the perfect taste recipe by subtracting the flavors least present in whatever you're trying to recreate. And apparently it works. The research team claims to have accurately recreated all sorts of different flavors from candy to sushi. And there you have it, friends. It is a lickable, screen able to replicate any flavor you can imagine i mean we always joke about smell vision right the idea that a t Oops, sorry. TV can replicate the sense of what you're seeing on the screen. Well, this, quite literally, is the first massive leap forward in taste of vision. Just think about what this technology could mean for guys, menus totally like and recipes thing. and advertisements and historical preservation and video games. Finally, you'll be able to taste Kingdom Hearts' sea salt popsicles, Portal's iconic chocolate cake, provided it isn't a lie. Heck, even Castlevania's iconic wall meat. Does it mean that we'll actually be able to enjoy Wonka vision someday? Spoiler alert, yes. Yes, it does. Now, obviously, the Noromaki synthesizer isn't the same thing as Wonka Vision. Not yet, anyway. But if the research is correct and every flavor is actually composed of five basic tastes, then the field is on the cusp of an absolute breakthrough that'll make Wonka Vision an absolute inevitability. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but with the five building blocks of tastes in hand, it's only a matter of time before we're able to map out every single yeah, taste that creepy movie from to the human years palette. Yeah, that creepy movie from 10 years ago that I watched in elementary school is... Today, uh, every color reality. you see on a screen can be described with an alphanumeric code. HTML colors, for instance, use six-digit case-sensitive alphanumeric codes. The first two digits refer to the intensity yeah, of the man, red, the middle two digits refer to the intensity of the green, and the last two refer to blue. Zero, zero, man, zero, 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 oh, or zero so intensity of all colors We're is doing. black. F, 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 or Big full chicken. intensity of all colors is white. Zero, 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 zero F, F is blue. Eight, four, two, five, nine, three is a specific purple color reserved for killers and so on and so forth Smart. and all those six alphanumeric digits are able to describe over 16 million Don't different colors which go figure is about 15 million more than the human eye can detect and a similar system can absolutely be adopted for taste the noromaki synthesizer is proof of it so join me if you will as i let my theory brain run free for a minute because the way i see it mapping it every flavor yeah. allows us to infuse continue over over thinking everything over 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 we could say take I like over things stuff too. Piece of gummy agar. Let me ask you a show, Matt Pat. Matt Pat, if you're watching this, let me know. Essence create a fake jelly bean with the same flavor and consistency as the real one. Maybe even with a fraction of the calories. Theorists, it means I could infuse glasses of soda water with the flavor of Diet Coke. Plus, as we develop more edible materials with different textures and consistencies, it'll only become easier and easier to make artificial food that's indistinguishable from the real thing. There's already a ton of research and development going into edible polymers and other edible packaging. Similar 
strides could absolutely be taken in search of edible substances that are tasteless but feel crumbly, waxy, oozy, or crunchy in our mouths. Granted, mapping flavors and manufacturing edible polymers is still an early business, but I look at it this way. When I was born, Nintendo had just released the 8-bit NES. Today, just a few short decades later, we've got 9th gen consoles that have me doing double takes at the screen because it feels like I'm watching an actual basketball game. When I was in grade school, they taught us that different regions of the tongue sense different flavors. The thinking at the time was that there was a sweet region, a salty region, and so on. Today, thanks to additional years of research, we know it's not that simple. Taste buds capable of tasting all five flavors are in fact scattered all over the tongue. A decade or two from now, imagine what we'll know. My point is that artificial flavoring is gonna get Checky better. Technology. Edible material try is too. gonna get better. And when they get good enough, 3D food printing, yeah, 3D food printing is gonna be the thing that brings Wonka Vision to life. I promise that I haven't gone off the deep end here, theorists. 3D food printing is already a thing. As we speak, there are companies printing candy, pancakes, heck, even meat. All it takes is filling out the printer cartridge with the right food ingredient, sugar and flavoring, pancake batter, plant-based meat substitute, and then letting the 3D printer go and do the rest, slowly, layer by layer, to make everything from mind-blowing geometric sugar designs to incredibly realistic replications of steaks. Uh, excuse me, waiter, I ordered my food like an hour ago. I sincerely apologize. The chef is having troubles with the printer. And one thing that's mm -hmm. already being printed <laughs> is hearing that reference. I'm telling you, we are this close to Wonka Vision being a reality. Like Black <laughs> Mirror levels of close. Imagine, if you will, having a 3D food printer in your home. You put in a taste cartridge. Inside are five electrolytes capable of matching any known flavor. Then you put in a materials cartridge filled with tasteless edible filaments capable of mimicking all sorts of food textures. Suddenly, your 3D printer springs to life. It's received a recipe from this bizarre reclusive chocolatier with a bad haircut from halfway across the world via the Wi-Fi. You stand back and you watch as your 3D printer creates a chocolate bar out of thin air. You reach out and you bite into it. It sure tastes like a chocolate bar. It feels like a chocolate bar. And the best part is that this food that delighted your taste buds actually has a fraction of the calories and sugar. Even has some vitamins and minerals thrown in. Your taste buds get chocolate and your body gets a multivitamin. No, we're missing his lickable wallpaper. It tastes so real. Try some more. The strawberries taste like strawberries. The snozberries taste like snozberries. Oh wait, that exists too. Well done, Wonka. You may be the dreamer, but the scientists of today are the ones making it a reality. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. <laughs>